How about the legislators? Should we grill them? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, they're not legislators yet. <laughs> they get a free pass today. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, ma'am. Probably being the youngest in the room, um, what about, like, I don't go to doctors. I can't stand doctors. I think most of them are quacks. Huh? I go to <laughs> secondary. I go to chiropractors, homeopathic, mm -hmm. you know, preventative. I eat well. I exercise. That's a doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With this mandatory health care, is this going to cover that stuff? Or am I still going to be paying out of pocket plus paying out of pocket for health insurance that I'll never use? Yes. <laughs> um, chiropractic is not considered an essential benefit, I don't think, under the essential benefit set in the law. Um, but I haven't read the specifics on it. They don't cover alternative medicine. Um, I'm, I'm the one that went to the strip mall and had my child in a jacuzzi tub because oh, I told the doc yeah. that she was a quack and <laughs> she needed to jump off a bridge and she told me I had to have $10,000 worth of tests. And you told her to duck and she was a quack, I know. Uh, you are, uh, I, you know. I out of pocket two grand to have a midwife deliver my doc, my son, and had six weeks of aftercare included in that two grand. Wow. We had three, uh, three of our five by midwife, but we had them in a hospital. We didn't have them, you know, we went quite that far but uh, I really appreciate father, we went I yeah um, I, you know I, I do predict at some point in your life you're gonna need a doctor and uh, uh, it'll probably be a serious thing I, mean, um, I did end up in ER last year with a severely broken wrist but yeah well that's a good reason to have a doctor right there you know, <laughs> as opposed it's to a midwife five people to convince me yeah to go. yeah no there are times um, I spent, um, you know, I'm going to be 65. I don't think I spent $500 on health care this year. And that's kind of been my life except two years ago when my wife had meniscus surgery. And, uh, you know, you get these big things. And the, the older people in this room will tell you the day will come. <laughs> I'm not going to look at any of the older people. They know what I'm talking about. So, uh. <laughs> Okay, Reed, I won't say anything. That'll be the end of the story, I know. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Have you gotten any hint of the, the format of the new coverage? How it's good, you know, deductibles, co-pays? Do you have any idea? Uh, there's four different plans. Uh, there's bronze, uh, gold, silver, no, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Uh, they're essentially all the same plans, but the more, you know, once you get to the platinum, your co-pays and deductibles are very low. Uh, and so they essentially, they have to have these essential benefits that the federal government defines. By the way, the federal government is trying to define the essential benefits set, and here's how they did it. We can't figure it out. Let the states decide. <laughs> Honest to goodness. And so the rule says it's the benefit set of the second most expensive plan that's uh, owned by the majority of small businesses. Seriously. So that's the essential benefits that'll have to be in every health plan that are, that's offered in the exchange. But do you have any idea what the co-pay or no. deductibles are yet? No. Uh, the maximum deductible individual is 2000 and 4000 for a family, which means if you have an HSA plan today, like my wife and I had, it was 5950, 6150 now, it's gone. You won't have it. The law will take it away from you. They lied when they said you could keep your plan. You will be allowed a 2000 4000 Yes? You know, I, I deal with a lot of small businesses. And, and Mark, I work at the radio stations in Detroit Lakes. And then you know, my job is to talk to small businesses. And a lot of them are worried about what it's going to do to their business. I mean, how a lot of them haven't hired anybody because they're worried about the mandates coming. You know, how much is it going to cost to their, you know, add to their bottom line? What's it going to do to their small business to, to put everybody else in on health insurance? Because they, they have to pay at least 50% of it, correct? Uh, they do if they have a group plan, they do, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they can go on a defined contribution plan, just pay a portion of, you know, the insurance, and that'll dispose of their responsibility. This was another hidden thing we just discovered. Uh, let's say that you work for an employer, you earn $35,000 a year, uh, he's now covering your family, but you have to pay part of that, right? And you pay, your share of the bill is $960. Under the new law, you cannot be allowed to spend more than 9.5% of your income. The federal government is telling you how much you can spend. That was for you. That. Anyway, 9.5% of your income, which means that about $35,000, you can still get your coverage from your employer. 
However, your spouse is out and may not qualify for any kind of subsidies. <laughs> Oops. New York Times wrote this today in the paper. Oops, that was a mistake. We should fix that. You know how they want to fix it? Have the IRS change the code, write the rule different, not change the law. So at what point you know, say someone works now forty hours a week, they get health insurance. And I've tried to find this and I have not found it. Maybe, so you can maybe help clear it up for me. But what point do they have to work so many hours? I mean, what if they, if the employer says, you know what? I can't afford to put you on health insurance anymore. I'm going to cut your hours to X amount of hours per week. 30 hours. 30 hours is full time. Okay. But then they can, they can factor in, uh, and I don't remember, this gets really complicated, but they can take all the part timers and full timers, average them together, and tell you how many full time equivalents you have. So if you had 100 half timers, that's 50 full timers. Say, in under 50, 50 and under, your small group and the rules are different. You don't have to provide insurance for your employees with 50 or under, and you don't have to pay any of it if you don't want to now. Right. So just see, wouldn't a lot of employers all of a sudden say, what, well, I'm going to cut everybody's hours, I'm going to bring them down below that? Uh, yeah, some will try to play that game. Um, it's hard to do. I mean, you have to get them down to 29 hours a week or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think what happens is they just drop coverage, you know, which, yeah, if they're under 50, it's not a problem. It's when you're over 50 employees. And this is, I get a little lost in the details. It's, I used to know them two years ago. <laughs> it's like, okay, who gets what, you know? And most of the employees, employers I talk to are under 50 employees. Yeah, and some employers now, they're larger employers, they can pay a $2,000 a month penalty for their employees instead of buying them health insurance. And they think maybe that's a good idea. But I guarantee you that 2000 will be 10000 within a few years. And they'll rue the day they ever cut that. The penalty they pay, or, I mean, penalty is not tax deductible. Right, but where does that money go to? It goes to, uh, I suppose, to the exchange or to the IRS to offset. The, it goes to the IRS to offset the tax subsidies. IRS, it's a tax. Yeah, 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 it's a tax penalty. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, if Mitt Romney becomes so, president, yes, exactly. what all is it going to involve for him to actually reverse Obamacare? Oh, actually, I think there's a lot of things he could do by executive order pretty quickly. Uh, if he has a Republican Congress, it will take, you know, 100 days to get rid of some of the more obnoxious things. I think the primary thing is going to be on trying to balance the budget. And if they try to balance the budget, that's a good place to start, getting rid of uh, these mandates that cost so much money. In particular, the billions and billions and billions of dollars in um, uh, subsidizing insurance through the exchanges. Listen, Minnesota has spent, I don't know the number anymore. It's 50, 60, 70, 80 million dollars already planning this exchange. Last year, the total commissions paid in insurance to private insurance brokers, again, the total in Minnesota is 50 million dollars. Minnesota spent 42 million dollars two months ago hiring one consultant to build the infrastructure for the exchange. It's called Maximus. Maximus' primary job is enforcement of federal regulations and state regulations, by the way, but they're defining, designing the IT for our state. Someone called an agent in Illinois and they said, uh, you have one of those online uh, health insurance portals. How much does it cost you to put that together? You know, the state is spending like, you know, $100 million on theirs, whatever. <laughs> he says, give me a hundred million, I can build a lot of those, you know. I, I don't know, you know, 25,000, 100,000, whatever it costs, but uh, here's what makes it expensive is they have to evaluate all the, um, you know, all the qualifications because if you earn X amount of dollars and you earn it in this way, then you only qualify for that. Let me, let me tell you, this is really crazy. In, um, in the tw 2000s, the state of Minnesota passed something called Health Match. And what they were trying to do is create a, a website portal where if you were um, on a government plan of some sort, you could go in and, and you know, put in information and it would tell you all the things you qualified for, right? It's called Health Match. There were 16,000 decision points that they had to try to somehow coordinate because of all the different kinds of programs that a person could qualify for. They spent I don't know how much money, it was millions of dollars, they were developing this and they said it's impossible. 
So one of the reasons there's no asset test for Medicaid qualification now on the new program is you don't have to do an asset test. That's what makes it complicated. Can I share one more weird story? There's a program called Healthy Minnesota Contribution Program that started in Minnesota this year. It's taking people off of Minnesota Care, adults without children that earn between 200 and 250 percent of federal poverty, and it's buying them a private insurance plan at half the cost that we were spending on Minnesota Care. Um, some people say, well, we shouldn't be subsidizing that. Well, that's a heck of a lot better than the other one. Uh, so we're helping people by what's called a defined contribution, give them some money to buy a private health insurance plan. Minnesota Care has an asset test. You can only earn or have $10,000 in assets to qualify as an individual. Well, <laughs> one day Greg Dottillo got a guy pull up to talk to him about buying his health care subsidized by the state in his brand new Corvette Stingray. And Greg sort of said, hmm, I think he's got more assets than he told the state about. <laughs> we, we've been running into a few of these, not a lot, you know. So I'm actually in a meeting with the Department of Human Services and the legislators and the health plans. We're talking about Minnesota Care and about this program. The reason I know so much is I taught the course that trained the agents. And I think Ed might even have been through that course. And so I, I know the law pretty well. And I brought this up, you know, there's this level of fraud and the agents don't know what to do should they report fraud, you know, they don't want to be your policeman. And they said, well, there's always other factors. It could have been his cousin's car. You know, you don't know. <laughs> and Greg Dottillo was sitting there and he says, excuse me, I was the agent. It was his car. I asked him. <laughs> but here's what I discovered. You, uh, you enter this plan, you fill out the form, 16-page form, obnoxious form, you send it in, you qualify. They do not verify your income. They don't do a check on your income. Maybe there's a level of fraud there. I don't know. I should think that would be a good bill to introduce, that they must verify income. Didn't they hire a pile of new agents, an IRS agent, like 16, Oh, yeah, that's the federal. Yeah, there was supposed to be 16,000. 16,000 yeah. agents? Yeah. And they should be able to do something. Yeah. I have a friend that's retired uh, class of 65, like mine, who used to be the liaison for IRS in Minnesota. He says, this will set him back 10 years. <laughs> well, they, I don't know. If they quit auditing individuals and go after those insurance scoff laws, maybe that's a better thing. We could go all night, I know. This guy could go on all night. It, Except I got to go to Crookston. Font of knowledge, but he's <laughs> got to be at Crookston in the morning. I got to be there at night. And um, Dave is doing everything he can to save the finest health care in the world. If, if America goes, there's no place for the Canadians to come. For That's healthcare. right. Um, I, well, I, if I would have been in England, see, I, I had knee surgery. Uh, in England, they would have handed me a cane. What this has meant to me. Maybe it's five years of life because I've lost 50 pounds instead of limping along with a walker as I would still be doing in England, I can walk six miles. Now. But he's old enough for Medicare now so we'll buy him a cart or won't cost him a thing. I, I was in Cornwall, Cornwall, England. got so sick, as sick as I've ever been. My throat, I couldn't talk. I mean, I had a strep or something. I mean, I was so, so, so sick. I said, I got to go to a doctor. I just scared me the thought, but I said, I, I got to go. Maryland calls, calls up, whatever, make an appointment somewhere. We found something in the book. That's good. And good. they said surgery going. isn't today. I had to well. wait five days. To, to, you know. So I did. And then I went to a place, and it was just a shack. It was, like, not painted. It was a shack. And I did not believe this was the doctor's office. But this was a, just terrible. It was a witch doctor's office. Well, this was the, the, <laughs> the surgeon, the surgeon. And there was a line out the door. There wasn't even a place for me to go in. There was a line out the door. We went in, she snuck kind of side, and you just had to wait in this line. And I waited, proud, she went, she said, I'm not going to be around. Number. You had to get yeah. a number. Yeah, I saw that the procedures, when you got in the door, you take a number like a meat market, you know. But it took me two hours to get into the door where I could get my number off the hanger. And then there was probably 20 seats in there, so I had a place to sit. I waited another hour and a half, and what they did is when they called your number, you walk down a little dark hallway. There was a room 
on the side. I went in this room. It was just dimly lit. There was a guy sitting at a desk, supposedly the physician. I could hardly talk, but I told him I was from the United States and my throat was really bad. And I'm actually in the medical field. And I told him, told him this. And he never said a word. He flipped his fingers on the computer and said, go to the front desk and pick up your medicine. That was it. Never looked at me, nothing. And I walked to the front desk. They gave me three bags, codeine pills, which were just enough for 25 years, and uh, some antiseptic for my throat and some antibiotics. And a little white bag all packaged up. And I said, what, uh, what's the charge? I, I said, I have insurance. Or what? Said five dollars. That was it. I paid five bucks and I was gone. Pay for what you get. <laughs> yeah. That's the experience of, of England. Well, and that's the thing about healthcare. Healthcare is very personal. Everybody has a story, and everybody falls through the cracks. By the way, yeah. even in the United States. Um, we got to get. We got to get the free market back into medical care, or, or we'll lose it. Got a great bunch of books here. Would love to have you help yourself. Some of them. Are we still on? Turn me off, man. <laughs>